reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said, A little while, and you will see me no more. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is in travail, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she is delivered of the child, she no longer remembers the anguish, for joy that a child is born into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. So in my free time, I also um, teach philosophy at a small college near here. A lot of you know that. And one of the fun things about teaching is, and spe teaching specifically the subjects that I teach, is that um, learning a subject like philosophy or like theology or like scripture, deep subjects that don't have quick and easy answers, the fun thing about teaching them is that there's a kind of pain that comes with the learning process. Now let me tell you what I'm talking about. So I'll ask, we'll ask sort of a difficult question in class, and a lot of students will react in a couple of different ways. Some of the students will react by just thinking about it and then being hurt, feeling upset that they don't know the answer. The question will annoy them, and so they'll say, okay, well, what's the answer? And I'm a very mean person, so I refuse to tell them. I don't give them the answer. And maybe students that have had me in class for years maybe don't know my opinion on anything. And so they, that's something that they try to escape the pain by just jumping straight to the answer. Others will hear the question and it'll start to bother them so they'll change the subject. They'll think about something else. You know, Sometimes they'll see them going on their phone in class and then I'll yell at them, right? So they avoid the topic and then they, they, they don't want to feel that pain so they just won't think about it at all. So some want the answer right away. Some just avoid the whole question. Growing up is like that. And I don't mean growing up just physically. I mean growing up spiritually. Because we all start out immature. We start out ignorant in our spiritual life. And we can be, you know, in my 40s, we can be grown up physically but still immature spiritually. And I think probably most of us are. And sometimes God is inviting us to grow, to be educated in a deeper way. <coughs> And we can react like those students of mine. We can react by saying, okay, God, best said, just get me to the end. Just, I just want this virtue. Please just make me patient, just like that. We want the answer right away. Let me have wisdom now. Because it hurts. The learning process is painful. Or, even worse, we can realize how immature we are, how much we need to learn, how, how bad our bad habits are, and we can just avoid the whole thing and just not think about God and not think about our spiritual life and not think about our sins and just live our lives distracted with other, other stuff. <coughs> Jesus does not say in the Gospel, 
He does not say, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will end. He doesn't say that. <coughs> he does not say, you will be sorrowful, but I'll give you a way to not feel it. Jesus is not a quick answer. And he's not a drug to cover up the problem. He says, You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. It doesn't say your sorrow will stop, or you'll skip over the sorrow. The sorrow itself will turn into joy. <coughs> the answer to your question, when you're learning something deep, the answer to your question is in the discomfort you feel. The way to grow is in the pain. Not by trying to skip over it and not by trying to avoid it. Embrace it. The way Jesus says to embrace your cross. Don't avoid it. Don't run away from it. Don't try to skip it. Grab onto it and hold it. And through it, that exact sorrow is going to be the thing that turns into joy. I don't know how that works, but that's what Jesus is saying. And that's the way it works when I teach. The students that feel the discomfort and embrace it and are okay with it, and fight through it, struggle, and get out to the other end of that pain, they're the ones that really learn. And you and I, in our spiritual life, when we really embrace the struggle, not avoid it, and not try to skip over it, but really embrace it, really fight the fight. That's how we grow and that's how we learn. <coughs> the best part of it though, the part that's the most entertaining to the teacher, is this question that the disciples ask. What does he mean by a little while? How long is it going to take? And Jesus doesn't answer. It takes as long as it takes. But it is a little while. You know why it's a little while? Because the reward we get at the end is so worth it. Like a baby at the end of pregnancy. Once the baby's there, who cares how long it took? Once the knowledge is there, who cares how much pain we had to feel? Once we are united with God, who cares the path we had to take to get there? So brothers and sisters, how long is this little while? The little while is as long as it takes for us to be born. To be born into a life in Him and in the Spirit and into our true selves.